Okay. Um, okay, so again, DES was around for a long period of time, <coughs> very widely used. It became a, you know, it was a government standard, but it became, you know, in effect, a, 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 you know, a business standard as well. It's very, very widely used. Um, people realized eventually, you know, even the government realized eventually that we had to have a replacement for DES, and so they did a very similar sort of thing. They had a competition. Uh, now, the National Bureau of Standards is now known as NIST, National Institute of Science and Technology. They put out a call in the early 90s, I guess it was, late 90s, whatever, mid 90s, I think they actually started this process. They put out a call um, saying, hey, you know, uh, we're going to select a standard, a government standard in cryptography, you know, send us your crypto algorithms and you could become a famous cryptographer. How many, how many algorithms do you suppose they got? <coughs> a lot, okay. Everybody's doing cryptography in the mid-90s. It's open, you know, to worldwide. They got a huge number of applications. They eventually whittled it down to like a dozen, okay. So they had like a dozen um, algorithms. Eventually they got it down to like five. And I think everyone agreed that any of those five finalists could have been selected and they would have, you know, been tremendously strong algorithms. It was really top quality stuff. Uh, but they actually had a really, I, mean, I was actually at NSA at this time, so I saw a little bit of how they, how they did this. Uh, and it was really interesting, the way they set this uh, competition up. Okay, now, once they got it narrowed down to, say, a dozen algorithms, here's what they did. They would have a conference. Okay, and who could come to the conference? The people who had proposed the algorithms. And these are all like world-class cryptographers, right? And if you're one of those guys, you want your algorithm selected, right? So you get up there and you propose, you know, you talk about your algorithm and how good it is. Well, the rest of the people in the audience, they want their algorithm selected too. So what are they going to do? Attack yours. They're going to attack your algorithm. <laughs> Okay, so what happened was they got a tremendous amount of really intense cryptanalytic effort put into these algorithms in a very short period of time because of the way they set up the competition. So it's pretty clever. Uh, anyway, there's a bunch of strong algorithms. The one that was ultimately selected, um, the algorithm itself is known as Ringdahl, produced by uh, two Dutch cryptographers. Yes. So for all people that were submitting algorithms, like freelance cryptographers, I mean, I'm assuming they were working for like Yeah, and for the most part, I think they were, you know, sort of academic people or, you know, freelance cryptographers. I don't know if they really are freelance cryptographers. <laughs> That's a job I would like. You know, I don't know what else to call them. You work for a company, you work for the government, you're freelance. But, you know, they're, uh, you know, some governments are not that secretive as, you know, say NSA and places like that. So I, you know, I don't know if there was, I don't know for a fact there were not people working for government agencies. That, that's possible. There actually could be such people who propose algorithms, but I don't know if they're back. Okay, but um, anyway, the competition was, was really intense, okay? And the algorithm that was ultimately selected was this guy. Uh, we're just going to look very briefly at it at a very high level. It's um, an iterated block cipher, so in that sense it's similar to Dez. You take a function and iterate it a few, over some number of rounds. However, it's not a Bystel cipher. Now, what's the beauty of a Bystel cipher again? It's easy to decrypt, right? Because you have this XOR, so you can always decrypt. You don't have to worry too much about the function. Okay, if you don't build a Bystel cipher, you don't have that easy route to decrypt, okay? And in particular, what happens is you need to make functions that are invertible. Okay, so you can go the other way. It makes it much more complicated. Um, the, the real trade-off is, is this, okay? If you do the Bystel thing, it's really nice in that you can decrypt. But think about what you're doing. The left half, what is that? It's the old right half. That means you didn't even touch that thing. One round, you only affect half of the bits. So if you're willing to give that out, you can affect all the bits each round. So you can get sort of more bang for your buck, right? You can make the thing go, you can get more mixing, you get more action in a shorter period of time, right? With less work, conceivably. But the design is much more complicated. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so AES, uh, the block size is 128 bits. Now, actually, the Rindall algorithm itself, you can specify a block size of either 128, 192, or 256. But the official AES says it has to be 128 bit block size. Okay. The key length can vary 128, 192, or 256. Um, the number of rounds is 10 to 14, and it depends on the key length. The longer the key, the more rounds you have to do. Now, um, how does this compare to DADS? Okay, how big's the block in DADS? 64. 64. 128, that's good, you know. You can encrypt an entire 128-bit block instead of 64. You know, it's the same amount of time. You've just doubled your throughput. Uh, key length, how's that compare to DADS? 56, okay, 128. That's like twice as good as 56, isn't it? It's way more than twice as much work to break 128-bit keys. So if the algorithm is good, this is better than triple S. Yeah, that's right. So if the algorithm is sound, this is better than what you get from triple S as far as the key. OK, number of rounds, how's that compared to Des? It's fewer. It's fewer. OK, Des has 16. So even in the worst case, you're getting fewer rounds here. It, you know, it's, but the rounds are more complicated a little bit. <coughs> four different operations that take place in each round. Uh, and we'll just look very briefly at these guys. Now these two things here are the nonlinear part. So those sort of correspond to the uh, S boxes in the S. These thing, this thing here, the linear mixing layer, um, that sort of corresponds to all those permutations we saw in those. Okay. And this is just like where we XOR the uh, sub -key. Same, same, same sort of thing. Uh, okay, the byte sub. This is just a lookup table. Okay, sound familiar, right? Like an S box, right? We look those things up. We just go and we, we treat our uh, 128 bits as if it's an array of bytes. Okay, and then we look up each byte individually in this uh, particular table. Now, uh, so here's the actual table that's used. So if you're writing code, you're trying to implement AES, this is what you use, right? But, you know, think about it from the developer's perspective. Now, when they encrypt using this, they're not using a five-cell cipher, so they have to be able to decrypt. This has to be an invertible operation. So if you just make up a table and put a bunch of numbers in it, good luck inverting that, right? So they actually have a very nice mathematical description of what they're doing here. Now, in practice, you don't use that. You just use this lookup table. But that's important when you actually want to analyze the cipher and show that you can decrypt and close <coughs> uh, OK, then you get to kind of the thing that corresponds to the permutations. Okay, you take the array here and you just ship the rows. OK, circularly ship the rows, some number of bytes. That's all that's saying. Then you have this other nonlinear operation, which is kind of similar to the table lookup, but it's actually a really big table, so I'm not going to put it here. And it also has a nice mathematical description. Okay. And finally, you XOR the subkey. Nothing too interesting there. Um, okay. As I mentioned, the whole process has to be invertible, and that makes the design much more complex than what you have to have with the Feistel cipher. But again, you get more going on each round. You mix up all the bits each round instead of just part of the bits. So it conceivably should, should, be, uh, should be faster, okay, all else being equal. Uh, 